Hello and welcome back. It's been a long time since I had made the last video, but spring is coming, temperatures rising, snow is getting away. So now it's time for doing something onto onto the engine. Okay, I did some investigation on how to solve the problem, and. I already bought uh, the shop crane and the engine stand and the balancer unit to balance the, the engine on the, on the shop crane. But um, in, the, in, in an internet forum, somebody stated uh, maybe it's, it's also possible to, to remove the camshaft without the need of uh, removing the engine from the tractor. And uh, I did some investigation and I want to show you something um, let's have a look at um, several service manuals I got here the the service manual from, from the MF500 series also suitable for the MF200 series and here it stated uh, camshaft and tappets and, and the removal okay we got here several steps first of all Drain the engine uh, oil, split the, the tractor between the front axle and the engine, and between the engine and the transmission. Remove uh, third point, remove the rocker assembly, and next one is remove the timing case. And after that, remove the push rods, remove the f uh, fuel lift pump, and then invert the engine on a suitable stand. That's the main point. That's the reason why this work is so so difficult, so time consuming. Um, I think, for, for, for my opinion, this is not so, so good en engineer to, if you have to remove the camshaft, you have to completely diswrap the engine from, from the transmission, invert it, and then you are able to to remove the the camshaft. Okay, that's stated in the original um, MF500 uh, workshop manual. Then I had had a look at the original Perkins um, workshop manual, and also here is stated: um, remove the timing case, front cover timing gears, and timing case. Turn the engine over so that the sump is uppermost. Also here, you have to remove the engine and you have to invert the engine. Turn the engine upside down to not lose the tappets. Because if you're trying to remove the camshaft without <coughs> inverting the engine, the tappets will fall into your oil sump. Yes, and that's not the best case. I guess that's the worst case. Okay, and I got also the parts manual that you could see. This here is the tappet, and over on top there is the push rod where the rockers are connected to, and the tappets are put in from below not f from from the top side it's uh, it's it's put in from below and that's the reason why you have to invert the the engine and then i found on my int shop manual this paragraph camshaft all models this 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 uh, this manual covers the MF-135 and 165 uh, on the, the Perkins diesel engine and I guess, I guess the Continental diesel engine but this is meant to be for the Perkins type engines and here it's written to remove the camshaft first remove tying gear cover as outlet in paragraph 106 then remove fuel tank, rocker arm cover and rocker arms assembly. Se and here now the important point. Secure the valve tappets, 
also called cam followers, in their uppermost position. Remove the fuel lift pump and then withdraw the camshaft as a unit as shown in figure 123. There is 123. 21. Okay, there is it. And yes, this is. It, it looks like it's 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 the Perkins type uh, timing case, and this should work. So now is the big question: how to secure the valve tablets? So um, in 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 the massive Ferguson forum, someone stated maybe it's possible to to lock up the tablets with some magnets, and that was the best idea. Somebody stated and I bought some magnets, power magnets, and I will show you. Come on, yeah, they're sticking together. So what we got here is is a uh, diameter of 16 millimeter, something more about a half an inch, and this little magnet is able to pull six kilograms in order in, in English I mean in American uh, units about 12 pounds I think for that size that's not bad and it got also a fret inside and I put in a, a fretted bar this one is now about one meter and with this, I guess I could lock up the, the tappets and remove the camshaft without the need of removing the engine and avoiding this, this horrible work. Okay, um, in the next video I will put in uh, my removal assembly, my so-called, and we will see if I have success with with this idea and with this this I guess it's it's a tool it's not not a a, a, a gizmo to a, a gadget I it's, it's it's actually a a tool to remove to remove the the camshaft okay on next video I will I will present you what well, how, how did it work okay thanks for watching so we are back at the massive Ferguson 159 and I already did some work. I will show it to you. I removed the uh, uh, high pressure hoses from the uh, injection pump and also the, the low pressure hoses. And on the other side for the uh, power steering. I removed the hoses and drained the the fluid and so and now the interesting part I also removed the idler gear was also only connected to with these three bolts here and loosened up all the um, the connecting bolts I got two remaining bolts here to secure this um, timing case cover, this rear timing case cover and well, let's, uh, let's have a look onto the idle gear. This is the idle gear, this is the bearing and here you see they also broke one teeth off and I see some periodic wear. We got here wear and seven tooth later we got also wear and on the seven tooth also wear and that's over the whole gear there were an issue but I don't know why and where okay 
the Massey Ferguson uh, workshop manual says to dismantle the injection pump but I found out why should I remove the injection pump the gear is still on and I think I could remove the, the timing case with the injection pump and also with the power steering pump in one piece that, that saves me some time for dismantling and reworking or remounting the same parts again I see no need for that okay next step I will remove you see this cover is uh, loose and after that we could remove the camshaft all right I got the rear timing case cover off um, I had to remove the power steering pump but these were only two two screws and two bolts and well it was not big deal the main problem was here this uh, this bracket of this alternator was in the way and after the pump has been dismantled the cover came off with no problems okay next step removal of the camshaft